Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today on communications provider reduces locate costs with one call ticket management. My name is Julie Duke and I am with Boss Solutions. We'd like to thank you all today so much for joining our webinar. Just to give you a little bit of an uh, overview of what we're gonna cover in the next hour, we're gonna go through how Sync Telecom improved efficiency and reduced cost using Boss 811. We'll also go through the reporting and dashboards and how they meet the uh, management requirements for data. We'll also be showing you the mobile apps, which not only uh, do photo photos and videos, um, but they do it with location coordinates as well. We'll also talk about facility mapping capabilities and how they can significantly improve the management of your dig requests. At the end, we will be um, answering all of your questions and doing a gift card drawing. There is a Q&A um, panel in the um, bottom of your screen. So please enter your questions as we go along so that you don't forget them and we'll make sure to get to as many as we can. Today's presenters will be Brandon Smith. He is the outside plant project coordinator with Sync Global Telecom. And we'll also be hearing from Vishu Nayagam. He is our director of product engineering here at Boss Solutions. Just a couple quick notes before we get started. Everyone will be muted during the webinar. Uh, please submit your questions in the window anytime. Our panel will be answering all of these at the end. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded, so if you are a registered participant, you will receive a copy of this. Um, after the webinar, you will also receive a very short survey. We really appreciate your feedback on the webinar and also what you'd like to see in future webinars. Just a little bit about our company. We've been doing service management for over 25 years. Uh, we have service desk and asset management solutions for uh, cloud and on-prem. And of course, the product we'll be showing you today, Boss 811. It is a one-call ticket management solution for the damage prevention industry. As always, we look forward to bringing you the latest technology and being dedicated to your customer support. Today's featured presentation will be how Sync Global Telecom reduced locate costs with Boss 811 one-call ticket management. First, we're just gonna have a few quick highlights of Boss 811. This will be presented by Vishu Nyagam, our Director of Product Engineering. Vishu? Thank you, Julie. Okay. Uh, my name is Vishu Nayagam. I'm the director of product engineering here at Boss Solutions. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a quick overview of Boss 811 and um, show you some of the high level features in Boss 811. Boss 811 is a completely a cloud-based software and <clears throat> it, 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 it works on all modern platforms. Um, it works on all OSs, uh, Windows, OS, Linux, and everything. It's built on a modern platform and it's technically very advanced. We have used all the modern technical um, stacks and the engineering and the hosting, the infrastructure. So you will see <clears throat> those things in the applications. Um, it's built on a modern UI UX uh, framework um, and the software is fully customizable. It's easy to adapt, easy to learn. We keep the UI very simple and minimalistic and so that um, you got to get a greater um, uh, adoption for the platform. 
Also, we have a mobile application for the iOS and Android uh, platforms, uh, and our mobile apps also um, comes with uh, <clears throat> offline capability. Um, so you can get your tickets offline if you are going to a service area where it's uh, there is uh, a spotty connection. And uh, Boss 811 uh, works with uh, <clears throat> all call centers in USA and Canada. So what are the primary benefits of the the highlights of Boss 811. It's an application for all call centers. So if you have uh, your locator operation is multiple state, you just need this Boss 811 and you can be um, receiving tickets from multiple call centers into a single application. So <clears throat> it's a one source of information. It provides a single source of information for all your um, one call ticket data. And um, it gives you a great oversight to your locate vendors. If you have multiple locators, multiple state, and multiple divisions and everything. So everything flows from one software. So you get a great oversight on all your locate activities. Um, it, uh, Boss 81 has dashboard and widgets where you can customize it. With each and every user gets their, can build their own dashboard. So, and all these widgets and all these metrics are vendor agnostic. So if you have locate operations and locate vendors, um, so you change vendor, bring in new vendor and so on and so forth. So your report and your metrics never change. It's like all stays in BAS 811. Also one of the main, <clears throat> one of the core benefits is like you can overlay all your facilities and maps. Um, on top of the dig tickets and everything. So when you, when somebody's going for a locate or inspection or an audit, you see all the information right there uh, on the ticket itself, <clears throat> your facility maps and everything. And we can auto uh, close tickets. Uh, <clears throat> probably one of the uh, best features in auto closing and it saves a trem tremendous cost um, on your tickets. So you can like overlay your facility maps and then uh, make decision based on how far it is from your facility and those kind of things. We can auto close based on work types and so on. And the, the facility maps and overlays are available on the mobile apps also, and it can give you driving directions too. So <clears throat> other benefits is like you get a complete control of um, the workflow of the ticket, no matter how complicated your workflow is in your organization for the locate tickets, uh, you can achieve that in BOSS 811. It's highly configurable. Um, you can identify uh, high profile tickets, um, critical infrastructure tickets and everything in real time using your screening and routing. Um, uh, if you have locate vendors and uh, <clears throat> You have like reschedules from the locates, uh, for the locates, unlocatables, coming back to you, turning back to yourself. Those kind of things are identified in real time. And the one other thing, major benefit is like, you don't have to rely on the vendor software. Different vendor uses different software, so you don't have to learn anything. You just learn BOSS 811 and uh, all the, we do have integration with multiple uh, US vendors. So you'll be able to just use one software for all your tickets. Also, we provide you emergency notifications and such uh, for your tickets, and uh, we can um, route this emergency notification based on whatever workflow you have. Um, based on the locate metrics, you can identify patterns and trends and everything. Um, we have uh, <clears throat> help our customers on Boss 811 where based on the ticket, volume, data, and everything. We have consolidated a lot of member codes, uh, identified boundary tickets, identified duplicate locates, same address tickets, um, those kind of things in um, BOSS 811. Um, you can attach pictures and videos to the tickets from our mobile app or from the browser, and our mobile app makes it very easy to attach videos and pictures to the ticket. Um, and uh, any key performance indicator you want, you, you can bring them um, to the up to the dashboard uh, <clears throat> very quickly. And one other big feature of BOSS 81 is that we can reconcile the vendor invoicing. Vendor sends you um, locate invoice. They say like every 15 days, every month, they send you a list of tickets, 15,000, 16,000 tickets, and then 
um, you have no way of like uh, verifying the data or auditing the data. So BOSS 811 gives you the click of a button, it can give, verify and reconcile that data for you uh, for the vendor invoicing. And that's a significant cost. We identify so many um, errors in reporting or uh, locate vendor invoicing. Um, we are able to save a lot of money for our uh, customers on this one. Okay, so this is the basic workflow. So what the basic workflow is like, the ticket comes in from the call center, uh, everything flows into BOSS 811, and the vendor does not get the ticket from the call center, so you, in from the call center, as soon as the ticket comes in, you identify the ticket. You screen the ticket, see if you can auto some of the ticket based on various criteria. We have like a full-blown workflow engine where you can identify every aspect of the ticket. Um, tag the ticket and set custom fields, um, uh, match it up with your um, uh, map layers, uh, find the distance from your facility to the near, nearest dig site, uh, dig area. And if you, then you can either auto close the ticket or assign to an internal locators, or you can assign to uh, your locate partners, locate vendors. And we do have um, some integrations with vendor like USIC and other major vendor, uh, locate vendors. So our software can talk to their software and internally we communicate uh, ticket closing, ticket dispatch and all those things. As soon as the locate vendor closes the ticket, it comes to BOSS 811, we uh, update our ticket and send the positive response to the call center. Um, so. Uh, whatever vendor tells you, like relocatable, high profile, unlocatable, everything, it, you get a real time insight into those tickets. As soon as that happens in their software, it happens here too. So, auto <clears throat> close based on, um, since, since Sync Global is a fiber market, where I pulled out some data on our experience on the BOSS 811 fiber market. So, we can auto close 15 to 20% of the tickets automatically using our. Uh, auto screening uh, algorithms. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna show you a quick uh, glimpse of software so that you can see how it looks and feels. Okay, so. So this is a software here, BOSS 811. So what you do is like you get uh, uh, your own instance, you, uh, log in with your credentials, and we are also adding a single sign-on, so you'll be able to log in with your own uh, your uh, company credentials here. So log in, and you get a dashboard. Each and every user gets their own dashboard, and uh, uh, you can customize it however you want. We have like a lot of tickets, dashboard tickets in here so you can like uh, customize the widgets you can build your own widgets you can name your own widgets and everything so e this these that this dashboard is per user so each and every user gets it um so if it's a manager they can like build this dashboard based on his or her uh, metrics and we have like tons of widgets in here and also you can build your own widgets so this is like all you can like drag and drop in here you can find uh, when you click on it it will take you to the underlying um, ticket data. And uh, let me move the screen here. It will take you to the underlying data in here. And uh, um, these are like all the tickets. You can, if you have multiple call centers, you can see, look at all the call centers, the tickets from each and every call center, assign, close, this is a basic search. And you have a map view where you can see everything on the map here. Um, you can have a satellite and we can also overlay your um, map maps on top of the ticket. Um, and you select on a pin, you click on it. This is a ticket, there's one call format. You can add notes, attachments, time entries, event logs, um, and uh, this, is the, this is the dig area. So your map overlaid with it when a locator goes in or some, so you can see all the properties of your facilities. Um, and so on and so on. So everything is uh, right here, right? So before the ticket even comes in, this is the basic like ticket flow. You can like bulk edit, bulk assign and all those things. You can get driving directions um, um, from the ticket. So I can select, I want to go to all these tickets. So give me a driving direction, just uh, set a starting location here. Okay, I'm gonna start from here. So 
see the driving direction here. And then I can take it as a Google Maps, so get, pass it on to my mobile phone and such, right? So <clears throat> before this ticket comes in here, that's where we kind of like excel in here. So you say it's a screening here. You say we can screen any ticket, uh, for example, CATV in the work type, right? So I can screen all the tickets where I'm saying it's um, the work type contains CATV. I want to close the ticket and send it to the call center. So this ticket does not even come to your uh, work queue. Uh, other examples of screening is like uh, clear tickets if the work is outside of a designated buffer, right? So I have, I have my layers here, map layers here. I'm saying it was like uh, 400 feet away from my signal layer or uh, whatever it is, so I can send a close code and send it on its way. Um, I want to do it okay, after hour. <clears throat> I can even screen based on map area. So if you want to like, we have something called map area. So you can have your own polygon here and say any ticket comes in in this area, I want to screen the ticket, assign to a different locator or pass it on to my vendor and such. So you can do that. So it's a pretty, pretty, um, um, comprehensive uh, screening algorithm. And if you have like external vendors, for example, let's say you have um, USIC as an external vendor. So what you could do is like, you can just click on it and say screen all the ticket normal for a particular member code. If they are liquidating for one member code, you can say uh, assign ticket to email ticket to USIC. We do have some vendors, uh, partners here, uh, USIC, Integrity, Northern Lights, OCC, OTS and et cetera. And we can integrate with any locate vendor you have. Okay. <clears throat> so um, the lifecycle cycle library ticket is so the ticket comes in, it goes to the screening, we screen everything, comes to the ticket, ticket either gets to the vendor or ticket gets to your internal locators, they clear the ticket, um, they and we can see the whole ticket in here, right? For example, like if I go to my tickets only and open closed all tickets. So and this is like all my tickets. So let's take a close ticket. We all think we have added notes. We can add attachments in here, time entries, event logs. It tells you the complete history of the ticket in here, right? So when, when did we get the ticket? What happened to the ticket and so on and so forth. Um, also we have like a, a gallery in here. So you will be able to like add a, a lot of pictures to your ticket and uh, <clears throat> This is a picture, I can take that image and sketch the image if you want to. We have a small sketching tool, which you can use for sketching. And also you can like take a video and put it inside the ticket. So everything stays inside the ticket. Okay. There you go. So you can add as many as pictures you want. And Brandon has like almost 500 plus pictures on one large project ticket. Um, then let me show you, quickly show you how the whole mobile app works. So I have this ticket here, um, uh, here. Let me go back to my list. So I have three tickets, one is close to is assigned. So I'm going to my mobile app and let me bring up, this is an actual iPhone. Um, connected to, to the monitor here. So this is my mobile app. This is the list of tickets. I can go see and build queries on the web app and um, get to my tickets faster. So you can build any kind of queries. You have some local queries and global queries, global queries for the whole organization, this just for me. So once I have this, we have filters and everything. This is a list of tickets. And also I can take this ticket offline. So I just click on this ticket. So this ticket will be offline. So if I decide I'm going to an area where there's no cell phone connection or something like that, I can, um, I can do that, <clears throat> right? So now this ticket is available offline. So if I go out of my network or switch off my, go to an airplane mode, this ticket, I can work, still work on this ticket. Um, when I click on a um, uh, address here, I, I can get driving directions. This is based on like what kind of a map you have on your phone system. So you can get driving directions and, uh, and this is a ticket list, uh, ticket details. So you can see the complete details. You can go to that location and there's the excavator on the ticket. 
and I can make a phone call to the excavator if I have any questions for the excavator while I'm locating and also custom fields. So we have an option where custom field uh, is uh, additional data you want to collect uh, from your customers, uh, not from your customers, for your locate tickets. So you can build reports off of it. Uh, custom field could be like, hey, how much footage did we mark? How much time did you, do? Did you notice any damage and so, and so forth? So this totally under your control, you can completely configure it. Um, now add notes so we can add, I can just uh, click on it and enable my microphone. So I, I'll be able to add any notes I want here on this ticket, right? <laughs> so uh, then uh, we have attachments. We have so many options for attachments. One of the options we recently introduced the phone with extra info. So when you have this phone with extra info, just what you do is like um, you get this one and uh, it tells you like on the bottom, it tells you uh, uh, your ticket number, your company name and everything. Time we, <clears throat> we overlay all this information on the top. You've got a compass here, lat long, elevation, uh, and all those things. Now you can also use even in the dark, in, let's say late evening or you're doing the fall or winter months. So you can enable uh, flash and all those things. So it's a very uh, nice app. So now I can take picture. You can take up to like 12 pictures in here in one go. You can take as many pictures as you want. So once you do done, and now I can upload this picture um, to the ticket. So this is, this is um, as simple as that. It's uploading the pictures. And <clears throat> once you upload, upload the pictures, done, right? Um, also, one other thing we do is like you can like on our mobile app, you can enable all the layers and it will show up on the layers. So this dig box is right here and this is the, the nearest facility in here. You can go to satellite view, um, map view and everything and it even shows a, like, a, um, like a street view of that particular area in there. Okay, so here. And I'll call it. You can work the whole ticket from here from the mobile app itself and update the ticket and it will reflect on it. Just now we added some pictures and everything. So I refresh my ticket here. This is the ticket we worked on right now. So you can see I added three pictures. This is my gallery view. All the information is here. Right, it's that easy. Uh, notes are here. Time entry we did not add it. So this is like all the event logs. Uh, in here um, and yeah okay so that is like uh, <clears throat> uh, so the next one I want to show you is like some kind of like advanced search and basic search on the product so here if you look at the advanced and basic search so we have the basic search here then we have advanced search in here so you can basically we we hold all the ticket information we do not archive anything at least for the seven years we will keep the live data in here and once you can build any kind of like a query in here and build um, your searches and save the search as something and we call it pinned searches. So you, it's available here. So you can build some custom queries for any task. This will be like, give me all the tickets and this thing you can add, customize the columns and what. Okay, so I wanna to touch upon a little bit on the reports here. Uh, we have reports. We have some basic reports and uh, some uh, advanced reports too. So let me show you the reports here. Some of the reports are here, yeah, like the ticket, ticket summary. Um, we have like a summary reports, everything is clickable, locator summary, team summary, uh, summary, some summary reports. Then we have like, uh, we can build also build custom reports. Uh, like, okay, here really different, different people have different things. Customer reports are available. Um, you know, like a, you want a volume ticket volume analysis, so you can do like select your call centers, select the years, and you can do year to year comparison between them. Right. right? So that is our report. So we can build. You have reports, canned reports here, and also you can build your own um, uh, kind of report. It's not actually reports. Kind of so you'll be able to export the data also. So. 
I am, while screening, I'm marking a lot of tickets based on different uh, criteria as inspection needed or something like that. So my query is like, give me all the ticket where the tag is inspection, this tag, I am applying this tag in my workflow. So now I'll be able to like just export this ticket into a CSV file or something. So you will be able to get everything in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, uh, that is, <clears throat> that is here. And also like uh, we, um, what we do is like, we do not lose any ticket. We reconcile, we have this audit here. We reconcile every nightly with the call center for all your tickets. And if you miss anything, we will immediately in the morning, we'll let you know that, hey, we missed a thing. And that could be um, due to like different uh, connectivity issues between you and the call center and um, so forth. Uh, you can bring in as many as the users you want um, and they can have very, very uh, precise privileges on different call centers. Um, so if you have like a national organization, you wanna bring all your tickets, you can have different people uh, some admin, some locators, and also say this particular locator can work only on Georgia tickets and so on and so forth. So your user access defined by roles. So you can like define roles and then define permissions um, to the roles and do it. You have a good notification engine. You can notify based on uh, different call centers. You can have different notification schemes and such. So. <clears throat> Um, and map areas, and we talked about it, routing, time entry task, all the calendars, business hours, even like you can define multiple business hours and you can use this business hours and uh, uh, pinpoint your ticket to the right uh, people. And also collect metrics if you wanna know like how many emergency ticket came in during this month after hours, so we can bring you that information in one click. Um, yeah, so it can do a lot more than that since uh, we don't have much time for this thing. I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna let Brandon talk about how he has actually implemented our solution in his organization. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you, Vishu. All right, guys. Uh, my name is Brandon Smith. I am the outside plant project coordinator for Sync Global Telecom. Um, so I have a hand in uh, damage prevention services. Um, I, I walk a fine line between both both the construction side and damage prevention. I do all the engineering and implementing uh, permitting stuff for the outside plant, and then I have to do all the maps and stuff to get everything on the damage prevention side lined up. A um, little back on our company, um, Sync Global Telecom has been a regional telecommunications provider since around 2000. Um, currently, we, uh, we have over 500 miles of plant um, throughout Georgia, some in Tennessee, and, and then some in Alabama. Um, our damage prevention services consists of five different individuals, and all five of these people, we average about 11,000, maybe a little bit more tickets annually over all three states. Um, so our journey to Boss 811. So we were with a company prior to this called Translore, and we were a customer of theirs for 15 or maybe a little more than that, 15 years. Um, so the outdated practices that they had there, you know, it cost our company a lot of time and money. Um, when I say outdated practices, our guys, our damage prevention team would actually have to go out after they located the facilities, they would have to take a a digital camera, take a picture of all the marks and everything, then take that card out of the camera, insert it into a card reader, into the laptop, save it on their desktop, and then save it into Translore. It was just, you know, it was just a long process that really and truly it was, may have been 10 to 15 minutes per ticket, but when you start adding that up over 11,000 tickets, it adds up quick. Um, so we had they talked to several companies, uh, ticket management comes over probably eight months to a year. And uh, ultimately we landed with Boss 811. Um, of course, in the beginning, we were hesitant of the conversion. We, uh, we had a two week window where we, uh, we worked tickets simultaneously through Boss 811 and Translore. Um, it was, you know, it was more work. Uh, we wanted to, number one, we wanted to make sure we didn't miss a ticket. We wanted to make sure that our facilities were located and, and protected at all costs. 
another great thing we got out of that is our guys got to see how much better things were going to be through Ball State from one than they ever were with Transilor. And in the end, you know, we had a few bumps along the road, but it was nothing major in Vishu and his team. They handled it easily and, you know, you know, within a couple of hours, they had a solution in place. Um, so the benefits that we have grasped from Ball State one is uh, they're technologically advanced versus what we were used to. Um, the versatility that they gave us, uh, you know, from the phones, iPads, um, map integration. So, you know, being able to get our maps intertwined with the dig site, dig area maps, that was, that was great. And then, uh, of course, customer service that we've had. So, of course, Vishu's already showed you a little bit, you know, he showed you the, the dashboard, you know. It's, uh, you know, they're cloud-based ticket management. So, for us, we're not keep we're not eating up space inside of our, our uh, corporate office servers or anything like that to try and record all this data. And, and uh, for our guys, you know, that gives them extreme accessibility out in the field as well. Um, so like he showed you in the demo, BallSat 1.1 allows each one of our users to, to manipulate their home screen to their liking. To, and um, they can have as many widgets and, and stuff that they want on there for the data that they want to look at. Now for our damage prevention manager, he's, for him, he's looking at a lot of different things that every locator is not. So, so that's where that versatility for them comes into play. You know, at least he can look at what he wants and get his tickets done for the day, but the guys are not looking at near as much as him. Um, along with the dashboard, each one of the users can download. We have the app on all of our iPhones and iPads. Um, we don't have Android in our in our company, but uh, it is available on Android devices. And uh, that feature alone has been a huge game changer for us. Uh, for our guys to be out in the field and have their phone, snap that picture, attach it, and done, that right there saves 15 to 20 minutes per ticket. Um, they can remotely capture those videos and uh, photos as many as they want and tag it to that ticket data and uh, work the ticket, everything from their phone. So really and truly, they don't even have to have a laptop or anything. But, you know, of course, our guys have both. So a lot of times they go back and forth between the, the laptop and the uh, phone. I uh, just wanted to give a little brief view of some of our tickets. You know, this is, of course, this is what he's already showed you. Uh, this is a phone uh, view of the tickets versus, uh, and then what the ticket general information is. Um, this is the, <laughs> the ticket I uh, mentioned briefly earlier. Um, we have a large project ticket that's uh, spanning over about 15 miles. And uh, so one, one of our locators went out there and located this. And you can see from the top up here, he's had 549 pictures and videos attached to this. Uh, that in itself is awesome. The fact that the guys can have an unlimited amount of, tick of photos and videos that they can put towards each ticket. and and anybody who is a locator, you know, or management, you know that that information is crucial sh should something happen, should a damage occur, you've got all that information. And that's, that's just, and it's, it's priceless. Um, I'm gonna go into this, uh, give you a little backstory on this. Uh, so before Vishu and his team can, you know, let everybody know that they had come out with this new uh, photo with extras, we, uh, one of my locators was out in the field one day and took a picture. He went to take a picture and he noticed that option. So he, he clicked on it and, and he was just thrilled, you know, at all the information he got on one picture with the ticket number, the time, and st you know, the, uh, the date and time stamped on there, the cardinal direction, the, the coordinates, you know, that is so awesome for us. And, uh, he, he called me, he was so excited. He said, man, you got to get on there and you got to look at this. And so I got on there. And of course, we sent a screenshot out to everybody and, you know, all the damage prevention guys just told them, hey, guys, y'all need to, this is what you're going to use from now on because this is, this is a huge benefit to us to have all this information time stamped on the picture. So, uh, uh, yeah, he was, like a, he was like a kid at Christmas when he called me. He was so excited about that. Um, here's a little, here's a, uh, view of the uh, map 
uh, kind of like what Vishu showed you, but this is the same ticket. So you can see the, you see the 15 mile span of where they're working. And uh, the one on the right is our actual facilities map overlaid with that grid view of their work area. So, you know, that that's, that's huge for our guys when they're working tickets because you know, they can look at the grid view and they can automatically say, okay, well, you know, they're going to be off of us or they're going to be on us right here. So it helps our guys to know where, you know, it's a, it's a quick reference, but we always reference that and we call the, the excavator just to double check. But I mean, that, that right there saves a huge amount of time to be able to look at it and visually see what's going on. So uh, I want to hit on the uh, customer service a little bit. Uh, so right out the gate, Boss 71 sales team, they were very quick to uh, set up a conference call with, with myself and my boss, Alan Smith. They, we, uh, we, we, were, we were very interested in Boss 811 right out the gate because of what, just what we heard on the phone. And then we followed that with a call with Vishu, and, and he went through kind of what he showed you guys today. He uh, showed us all the ins and the outs and everything. And, and you know, from day one, they've helped us with everything that we needed to to make this a well-oiled machine our guys get up they come to work in the morning they don't have to worry about their their app messing up or you know they everything's going to be on there they go they do their work they tag their tickets they do everything they're supposed to and we don't miss a beat um so for us we're proud to be a boss at one customer and their customer service i mean we couldn't be any happier with it and i will turn it back over to julie thank you guys Thank you so much, Brandon. Okay, so now is the fun part, answering your questions. So, I um, have quite a few questions here. Um, the first one is actually for Brandon. Brandon, how long did it take your team to implement uh, Boss 811? And what features do you find the most useful? Uh, well, you know, it, it, it took us a little while just to get everything in motion, but uh, but once we finally, you know, told you guys and said, hey, we're we're ready to make this switch. I mean, you know, within a month we had we were online with Boss Eight One One and everything working the way it should. So. Okay, uh, another question for you, Brandon. Um, what was the main reason that you selected Boss over other products? You know, I think, it, you know, of course, all the great features that Vishu showed us was awesome, but, but he has, he's, all, he's constantly changing. He's constantly working on it and doing things to better the product. So I, I think when, uh, when people get on there and they can actually see that, like I have, like the photos with the extras, I mean, even though we didn't, you know, even though he didn't get to tell us yet, we found it and, and we started using it immediately. So, I mean, I, the, I think the, constant evolution of the product is is a uh, is a good is something that draws you okay perfect yeah questions pouring in for you here brandon um one person wants to know um what was um what was the biggest challenge you had to overcome when you were implementing boss 811 uh i think one of the one of the more prevalent things that i can think of was the anxiety um of you know kind of the fear of the what ifs you know for us we, like i said we worked that two-week window off of what ifs you know we were like what if the, what if a ticket doesn't come through the system or what if what if we don't respond back to the ticket you know we were we were constantly worried about things like that and but once we got everything set up and set in motion i mean that we didn't i say it's a two-week window we probably only did it for about a week and uh that comfort level rose quickly to where we you know, now, now we're still headstrong doing, you know, ball seven one every day, loving it. Okay, great. And, um, another question for you, um, the management team, what has been their reaction to the product? Uh, that anxiety talking about, I mean, uh, we are, are, of course, our, 
our DPS manager, he was he was very hesitant, you know, because you know, because once once you're in place and you're used to that and you're used to that way of working, it's even though it took us longer to do those tickets, they were comfortable comfortable with it. So to uh, I think once we got out of that comfort zone and went into Boston Open One, you know, that that anxiety of being in the comfort zone was was what was holding us back for so. Great. And um, if you were to start this all over again, um, what was the biggest lesson you've learned um, and would you have done anything differently? Uh, I think the biggest lesson I learned is don't stay in comfort zone. If, you, if you're already thinking that you need a change, you need a change. And for, uh, for me and all the guys in my group, we would probably all tell you that the we would do different is we would have went faster towards ball state one more. We would have moved towards it a lot quicker instead of being so hesitant. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Um, actually, I have a couple of questions here for Vishu. Um, Vishu, one person is using, um, I'm using a third party for locating. So how can boss 811 be used to save me cost? Vishu? Yeah, I'm here. I was just muted here. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. So if you have a third party uh, locate vendors, what is we do is like this is the workflow I explained I explained my presentation. So you can bring all your tickets into Boss 811 and add this is like a central repository of all your one call tickets. Here, you can decide how that ticket flows. Either the ticket flows internally, either you want to keep the ticket for yourself, then you send tickets only which needs to be located by your locating vendor. And also, we get a real time feed from the uh, uh, vendors. We have integration into six, seven vendors here. If not, we have a one-way integration, and also we can build a two-way integration also using our public API available. Um, we can build that for you, or you can, if you have developers in your staff, they can write a little bit of code and get a two-way integration from your vendor software. And uh, so here, what we do is like we save cost by not sending the tickets and also uh, vendor ticket reconciliation, right? At the end of the month, when the vendor invoice comes, we automatically reconcile the tickets with the amount of ticket we dispatched to them and they cleared it. So we find out like they did not charge for any cancel tickets, retransmit, second request, third request, and so on and so forth. Thank you, Julie. Okay, great. Um, let's see. The next question is actually for you again, Vishu. Um, can you, do you have a routing map for locators? Route map. Okay, so now some people call it, some people call it driving direction. Some people call it uh, a route map. So we do. It's in the product right now. So um, we are. St it's not enabled for all the customers. We are still uh, doing some final touches to this thing. So what I could do is like, let's say I'm a locator. I come in here and I pull up all my tickets. Okay, this is my. Uh, when you log in, when you're a locator, you will see only your ticket. So let's say I pick up my ticket, all my open tickets. I have two tickets, now I'm saying, hey, this ticket, doesn't matter which order it is. I click on it, I say, I'm gonna start from, okay, this is my starting location, I'm gonna start from here for all these tickets. I just say, give me a route. Then I can open it up in my Google Maps, see, everything checks out. If you wanna make some adjustment, you can do it and I can send this to the phone. So we'll be implementing the same thing on the mobile phone app also, so that you can get your driving direction from the mobile app itself. So now you're on, um, you got a route map. Okay, uh, next question for you. Um, how do you handle changes with call center software? Um, the changes with the call center software, oh, I mean like uh, when, when the call center switches providers and everything. Yeah, so I have a classic example here. Georgia is changing call center uh, provider. So 
we have a call center here. This is their original call center. Now they are going to geo call. Um, they are supposed to go next month, but they are they are moved out. So we already implemented it. So these every uh, little changes with the call center, we handle it as part of your commit, our commitment. So um, no matter what they change, you will be receiving tickets and it will be totally transparent to you. Okay, well, wonderful. Um, oh, coming close to time here. We still got some more questions here. Um, okay, Vishu, um, are custom fields and tags included in the reports? Yeah, you can you can build your reports. Uh, once we add the custom fields, uh, which is to collect additional data points uh, from your locates, we can use um, this. This one of the other little beauty of Basit when I can build a query based on my custom fields. I can say, hey, give me the custom field, the common custom fields, and this like a call center uh, market specific custom team. So I can say, hey, site visit done here, true. I can build any kind of query. Then also I can bring my um, custom field um, in here. And uh, here, just like all this thing with it, true, then I can export it. Yes, so it can be done. Okay, perfect. Uh, another question. Can you build widgets based on custom fields? Oh, again, custom fields. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So you go, we have a configurable widget called number of tickets, add it, boom. Then you configure it. Just let me bring it over here. So yeah, custom fields. So I can say, okay, uh, damage notice, damage type. If you want to find out all my um, um, all my uh, ticket where the damage was caused by hitting a pole. There we go. So I can say, like that, like that, here. Yeah. So I can click on it. If I have any data, I will get that data. Okay. Um, one more question for you, Vishu. Um, can you send an email for map correction? Map correction. So map correction, uh, we don't have that feature right now, but uh, there is something we are building on. So when you have your map and you overlay all your things, and if you find that the map is wrong, the locator notice the map is wrong, you'll be adding a button here where you can take the screenshot of this map with their overlays and, and email to your GIS so that they, they get the lat long and they know what's the problem uh, and they can send it to you. Yeah, it's, the feature is not available here, but it will be, it's in our roadmap. Okay, uh, next question uh, is for Vishu as well. Um, can you explain the different types of screening in BOSS 811? Yeah, we can screen based on uh, work type, like contains, then we can do buffer, we can screen. So basically if I go here and you can, so these are our conditions available. So ticket number, type, status, one call format, meaning um, the plain text format, whatever is that on the ticket, you can find, look for a particular information on that ticket. Contains, does not contains, locate instructions, tunneling, boring, and work starts at on service area. We call it service area, it's member codes, company name, excavator. We can screen all the tickets coming from excavator type, work areas. So these are like additional uh, conditions you can mix and match. And then we have actions. You can take all these actions. So hope that explains. Okay, great. Um, I think we've got time for one more question. Um, what are some of the new features that will be coming to the roadmap for BOSS 811? Roadmap, roadmap, okay. So the roadmap, some of the things we have identified it as workflow designer. So um, right now uh, our designers, like a, like a UI based, we are gonna graphical workflow designer. Not only that, um, we have a screening algorithm. Now we wanna do a workflow algorithm too. So when the ticket is uh, worked on, you wanna take some action, a response added, send a notification to the call center or uh, send a notification to the excavator, send him some pictures or 
uh, send him some documentation or based on the ticket type and work type, send him some um, public awareness documentation, those kind of workflows. Teams, now, right now you can assign only to the locators. Then if you have a big organization, you will have teams of locators in the team. So manage those teams. Team will have a supervisor and um, um, a team will have a manager. Manager will you know, manage multiple teams, that kind of a workflow. Improved excavator notification based on response. And this will be part of our workflow designer. Load balancer. So let's say you are getting like 50, 60,000 tickets a year and you have like 10, 15 locators. You want to allocate um, uh, in a an equal ratio. Uh, so we will have some, um, some load balancer feature. Right now, we're go we use Google uh, uh, Maps as our base map. We are trying to bring Esri as our base map so that you don't have to like integrate anything. You just integrate one base map and expose that map to BOSS 81 and it will have everything you need uh, for your locators or even for vendors. Auto closing, right now we need a KML KMZ file for auto closing. We are uh, planning to auto close tickets based on Esri map. So there's one step um, you don't have to configure. <laughs> Damage module, uh, we have a ticketing module, a great ticketing module. So damage, a lot of customers will ask for a damage um, capture and claim processing kind of thing. So instead of different uh, verticals and different customers have different needs, uh, meaning different forms um, for damage modules. So in order to accommodate that, we are building a forms designer uh, where you'll be able to design your own forms then the, then the uh, and then the stakeholders will use that form to capture and it will also have some kind of a, a approval process and, and, and uh, checks and balances process built into it. Aerial photography, that is my pet project. So why not fly a drone? We already know, uh, um, we already know where our tickets are, what the deck coordinates, just like uh, Brandon told you, the project is like 15 miles long. So instead of going and taking pictures, why can't we just fly the drone over this quarter? This is not a good ticket. Let me take another good ticket here. So why can't we just, we have a mobile app, we have drones available. Why can't we fly the drones over a ticket and, uh, <clears throat> and take automatic pictures and uh, even the, we can automate the drone uh, because we know the polygon coordinates. We know the polygon. We fly the drone from one point, the drone will fly all the way across this work dig area, take pictures, come back and attach the pictures. Um, that is one project uh, which <laughs> I'll be doing. IVR integration, so right now we can do a notification on text and emails. So some customers ask for, hey, can you make a phone call if people are on emergency calls for or emergency tickets, can you make a phone call automatically and get an acknowledgement by either they acknowledge back using voice or they acknowledge back using type in some number. So yeah, yeah those are our features in the next, uh, for this year. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Vishu. Well, we are almost out of time here. So I uh, wanted to go ahead and announce the lucky winner of the, um, oh, let me share my screen, sorry here. Uh, yes, the lucky winner is Linda Holloway. Um, so uh, Linda, we will uh, be happy to get that out. Um, the, um, Gift, Amazon gift card out to you, uh, and we'll be in contact very shortly. Um, I know we didn't, uh, and let's see. Linda, you are with the Washington Utilities Transportation Communications. Congratulations. Um, I know we didn't get to every question today, so um, if you do have more questions or if you'd like to see a full-on demonstration, uh, please contact sales at bosssolutions.com or you can dial us at 678-684-1200. Again, thank you so much for attending today. Uh, there will be a short survey afterwards. We appreciate your feedback and look forward to hearing from you. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Brandon Smith from Sync Global 
for everything that you did today. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon.